You're listening to Sacks in the Basement, a production of the Broadcast Basement Limited, where every show is 30 minutes of good and comes from a basement bar on the south side of Chicago. Pull up a stool, pour a cold one, and join us right now for Sacks in the Basement. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found and always at SacksInTheBasement.com. And hello, everybody, and welcome back to my basement on the south side of Chicago. My name is Chris. I'm one half of Chris and Dave that bring you Socks in the Basement. It's 30 minutes of good that comes out each and every week talking all about the Chicago White Sox. But things changed right before this season was to begin, and we bring you now a full simulated season using MLB The Show 20. And we've been doing it ever since opening day. You never know who's going to stop by and be a guest. We've had a lot of different people come on here, including ex-coaches, ex-players, analysts, beat reporters. Who knows who's next? All I know is that we have a pretty good team at this point. 21-13 and sit the Chicago White Sox. They just swept the Baltimore Orioles in guaranteed rate field over the weekend. Got a nice day off, and they got three more at home against Tampa Bay now, who comes to town before a West Coast road trip. And anticipation is building as what the White Sox will be doing when they get back from that road trip. San Francisco, San Diego, and then could it be the arrival of one Michael Kopech? This is all brought to you by Cork and Carry at the park.com. They're at 33rd in Princeton. They're a Southside tradition. And it's up to you and me and everybody else who loves all that is pure and good to continue to support them during these trying times. Remember to get some great ballpark food, some great grub, award-winning burgers, wings, wraps, salads, you name it, they got it, and it's all good. Crack open a beer, sit back and relax as we throw it out the guaranteed rate field. Socks, Rays, next. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Guaranteed Rate Field. My name is Chris Lanuti, and we are getting ready for yet another Chicago White Sox simulated baseball game. Thanks for joining us. I really appreciate all the kind words as folks continue to chime in, talking about how much they enjoy these games, and it's helping them keep their sanity. It helps me keep mind that the White Sox continue to win, and Reynaldo Lopez looks like a pitcher once again. Six starts, three and two, ERA of 3.47, 36 and a third innings, where he's given up 29 hits and 12 walks for a 1.13 whip, and he struck out 31 along the way. And Raylo will take the mound tonight to face these Tampa Bay Rays. And Joey Wendell will lead off against him, the left-handed hitter hitting 252 for the Rays. And the first pitch on the way is low and outside a four-seam fastball. 1-0 the count. The White Sox sit with a 21-13 record coming into play tonight. Second in the American League Central. First pitch came at 7-10. As we have a very nice night, although chilly, with 45 degree temperatures, clear skies, winds, 9 miles an hour blowing right to left from foul pole to foul pole right now. This pitch is fouled back. Quickly, Wendell is 1-2 and against Reynaldo Lopez. Pretty night, but a cold night. This is the kind of night that my mother would go to a ball game with my dad. She would be here tonight, sitting there with him. And about halfway through, she would make him buy her a hooded sweatshirt or something because she was cold. I always feel like mom gets new wardrobe every year from Guaranteed Rate Field on these nights. Because he doesn't want to leave. She's like, I want to go. I'm cold. Next thing you know, she's got a brand new jacket. This one is sent out to right center field, tailing back towards the wall. It'll hit before the track and roll. It's a double so far for Wendell. He makes the turn at second. We'll think again as Robert gets that ball in quickly, but a leadoff double for Joey Wendell. His seventh so far this season. And Raylo puts the first guy on second base. Going around the defense, it's the starters tonight. They've had a lot of days off over the last week and a half. So guys are all feeling pretty rested. The pitchers, though, seven games in between their last start at this point. Lots of days off, like I said, have been occurring. Sox had a stretch there for three weeks where they didn't get one day off. Three in the last ten days now. As this one sent out in the right field, base hit. Runner coming around, Mazzara is going to hold him with a good throw in the home. He put that right on the money, but Wendell held up because why make the first out at home base? Sound like my grandfather there with home base instead of home plate. 
First and third and no outs. Austin Meadows comes to the plate. The right fielder hits lefty. He's got six home runs so far in the season and 11 RBI. As Reynaldo Lopez having trouble to start things off and now faces the 252 hitting Meadows. As a curveball misses outside, Meadows is three for seven lifetime with a home run against Lopez. That's an average of 429 over those seven at bats. And he lifts this one deep in the right field down the first baseline, tailing back towards the wall. And it's over. Reynaldo Lopez comes out, gives up a double, a single, and a three-run home run, and we haven't even seen our first out of the ball game. So you enjoyed that Orioles series. Raylo wants to bring you back to earth today, I guess. Difficult start to this game. I haven't even had a chance to tell you what we look like defensively. It's the starters out there with Grandal behind the plate. Abreu's at first. Madrigal's at second. Short is Anderson. Third base, Moncada. Left field, Jimenez. Center field, Robert. And in right field, Nomar Mazzara, who's already had a couple of things that he's had to do out there. Everything's going out in his direction. He just watched that home run go over his head. As Brandon Lowe steps in now, hitting 295. The four-hitter comes up to the plate with the bases clear because there's already three runs scored against Reynaldo Lopez. And that was through his first 10 pitches. 0-1 the count. Next one is an inside four seamer for a strike 0-2. So Lopez not starting off the game the way you would want it to start. But it's early. Let's not forget that the Orioles were up 4 to nothing, and then made it 5-1 to one very early on on Sunday. Sox came roaring back and won three. that game. Inside fastball, strike three taken. Wicked pitch by Lopez, who now stalks around the mound. I wish you would have had that kind of intensity when you started the game. And now the left-handed hitting first baseman, G-Man Choi, steps in and swings and misses at an inside four seamer. 0-1 the count. Choi went two for four in his last game for the Rays with an RBI. He's batting fifth tonight. A lot of lefties coming up. The Rays, I'm sure, the way that they're managed, the way that their entire organization runs, they have a very different lineup, lefty to righty, and the lefty lineup is doing very, very well out there. When I say lefty lineup, I mean mostly guys up there that hit left-handed. As Choi puts this one out into shallow left field underneath it, Moncada will make the catch. There's two gone. Now Willie Adamez steps up. The infielder's hitting 305, signed out of the Dominican Republic. A youngster with some talent. And he hits right-handed, standing in there right now, 1-0 against Reynaldo Lopez. Lopez gave up a double, single, three-run home run, struck out the next batter, got the following batter after that to fly out shallow. And now is one and one on Adamas. The next offering. Misses outside and goes to the backstop, a slider. Lopez winces a little on the mound at that pitch. Starts working his arm out. That's not a good sign for your pitcher. Gives up three runs, looks confused on the mound, starts blaming something with his arm. This might be a quick night for him. A change up away, swung on and missed. The count evens two and two. Working quickly, Lopez delivers a grand owl. It's chopped towards short. Cutting off Anderson is Mankato, then throws it across on a nifty play. T.A. was getting ready to make the play, and Mankata grabbed that slow chopper and sent it over for the final out. The White Sox though trail by three heading to the bottom of the first. Charlie Morton the ageless one. Eight starts this season. Two and one record. An ERA of 4.66. 46 in the third innings with 42 hits and 15 walks given up. That's a whip of 1.23. He has struck out 47 over those innings. Morton has discussed retiring even indicating this could be his last year. Tim Anderson will lead it off hitting 336. And the first pitch is a curveball at the knees taken for a strike, 0-1. The Rays are 15-21, fourth in the AL East. The only team that they're in front of in that division is the team we just saw in the Baltimore Orioles. And these two teams are actually pretty close to each other, the Rays and the Orioles. The two teams that we've seen 
during this weekend and now into the week. Ground ball down the third base line. Dies before it gets to the third baseman. Morton can't get it over to first quick enough. And an infield base hit for Tim Anderson. He's on. So the Sox have a base runner right away. And like I said, it was disappointing how this started. But as Yasmani Grandal comes up, batting left-handed. This is a potent offense. Although this is a good pitcher we're facing. Grandal sends this one deep out in the left field. And that ball is going way back and out of here. Halfway up towards the concourse in the Goose Island section. Yasmani Grandal puts it out 420 feet at 107.3 miles per hour. And right away, he's got his ninth home run of the season. And the Sox have two runs. So the Rays got three runs on a three-run jack before the first out was recorded. So far, the White Sox have sent two batters to the plate. A single and a homer makes this 3-2. to two. We said the wind was blowing straight across. I'm surprised they're all landing out there in right field the way it's going. These guys are jacking them out. Abreu comes up hitting 278, takes a 94 mile an hour fastball outside for ball one. One and oh, the count. Morton into the line, the pitch. Down the middle, a curveball taken, one and one. Abreu also has nine home runs. Grandal just tied him. A lot of guys up there in the 9-10 range for the Sox. Cut fastball outside, swung on and missed. 1-2 and two to Abreu. Rondal was 0-4 on Sunday with four strikeouts. Swing and a miss by Abreu at a curveball tailing away in the zone. Morton's got a strikeout. And there's one gone. You know, that shows how quickly things can change in baseball. He was 0 for 4 with four strikeouts in that game. Very frustrated. Sox still come back and win it against the Orioles for the sweep. As Moncada steps in, batting lefty, and takes one outside, 1 and 0. Moncada's got five home runs, 331 average, 16 RBIs. His OPS is at 908. And has been batting regularly in the four spot for the last couple of weeks. And his numbers got better when he moved there. Meanwhile, when you look at Encarnacion, Jimenez, and Grandal, if you put them in the three or the four spot, it is atrocious. So it's been difficult to find guys you can put in there. Abreu took a day off, and that's when Grandal had the 0 for 4 and 4 strikeout day in the three spot. Give him Abreu's protection, look what he does. Jimenez stands on deck as the count goes to 3 and 1 to Yoan Mancato. Morton in the line, the pitch. Chop the second base, going to be scooped up and sent over easily. The 4 3 put out. And there's two gone here in the bottom of the first inning. And Aloy Jimenez will stroll up there. He's hitting 264. He leads the team with 10 home runs. He's got 27 RBI. Leads the team in RBI, leads the team in home runs. You can see something going on here early this season. I don't think he's on a hot streak to start. I think he's going to heat up even more as this season goes on. The ball is low and away and swung on for a strike. 0-1 the count. Morton into the line. The pitch to Jimenez. Low and inside. A curveball misses. 1-1 and the count. Sox have three here against the Rays. They go on a West Coast trip. They already had one West Coast trip where they went 2-4. and four. Splitting with the Angels and losing both in Colorado. Then they came home and swept the Orioles, and we're here where we're at right now. With a team in second place and eight games over 500 coming into action tonight. That pitch misses 2-1 and one the count. Morton checks the sign into the wind and the pitch. Swung on and missed a curveball low at the knees. 2-2. Two and two. Both pitches that Jimenez has swung at have been just barely outside of the zone. Morton working him low and away and low and inside. Has not come up on him. He's trying to dive away or dive in on him. Here's the pitch. Now he comes up and it's fouled straight back. Jimenez was just underneath that pitch. And he was trying to take it all the way out. Swings and drives one down the first baseline. Fair ball is going to roll into the corner. Aloy on his way into second base. He will get there easily. 
He's got a double. So with two outs, a two-out double from Aloy Jimenez, who the Rays decided to shift on. So there's nobody near first base or in right field. And that is an easy ground ball down the line. And I wonder if he took some advice from Juan Moncada on that one. Because when they shift on Moncada, he does that all the time. To the point where it's almost funny when teams shift on him now. Because he's been beating them up. Jimenez finally beats the shift. And Encarnacion comes in. He also has 10 home runs. He's tied currently with Jimenez. Both of them have 10 home runs. Encarnacion hitting 250. Had a big game-tying home run. Solo shot with two outs in the eighth inning on Sunday. As the Sox went on to win it in the ninth. Walking off their first walk-off win of the season. Encarnacion fouls this one off. The count is quickly one and two. Jimenez leads off of second. Morton barely paying any attention to him, and he doesn't really need to. He's focusing on Edwin Encarnacion, who swings and misses at a curveball inside. Morton gives a fist pump and walks off. So he escapes there. We've seen two home runs in this game so far, and after just one inning, it's 3-2 to two Rays. Want to remind everybody that Sox on 35th, the world-famous blog. They cover these games. They give a box score after every game. They have a recap after every game. And after every series, they post stats. I know they just did an end of April special on it as well. They're covering this like a glove, like a warm blanket. There's a ground ball from Yandy Diaz on the first pitch. Goes to Nick Madrigal. He sucks it up and sends it over to first for the first out. One pitch, one out for Lopez, who needed 22 pitches in the first inning and gave up three runs. And Mike Zunico hitting 274 with four home runs. The catcher stands in. And the righty takes the pitch. He's 0 for 5 lifetime against Lopez as he takes a ball inside, 1 0 the count. High four seam fastball misses, 2 0. So remember, after every game, go direct to SoxOn35th.com and get the recap. We had Joe Binder on from SoxOn35th, on I would say about a week and a half ago when we were in Anaheim. And he really believed that this simulation was dead on. Relatively close to what you were going to see from the Sox. Which I think makes it a little bit disappointing, but at least we have something fun to listen to. The 2-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. It's going to be a drop third strike. Grandal sends it down to first. And that's two outs. I worry every time Yasmani throws one down there. He's had two drop third strikes that he sent down the line in the right field already. And it's Cinco de Mayo. I think that's a crazy stat. First pitch jammed and sent out into shallow center field. Anderson is going to actually call off Robert. So right away, the Sox are out of the inning. Two batters went down on only their first pitch. And midway through the second, the Sox trail by one. Nomar Mazara comes up hitting 202. Before you scoff at his average, I want you to know that not only has he had two home runs this past week in the last seven games, but he's had some big hits and then had a big, big leadoff walk in a pinch hit roll in the ninth inning on Sunday night that started things off. Adam Angle ran for him and eventually scored in the walk-off. I'm sorry, it wasn't Angle, it was Danny Mendick. But Mazzara had replaced Angle. He's 0-2, though, quickly to Morton. Inside, swung on and missed three pitches, three strikes, and two of them were out of the strike zone, so... It was like he knew I was talking good things about him, so he had to go up there and look foolish. I could do that. Swung at two pitches, nowhere near the zone. One out here in the bottom of the second. Nick Mandrigal comes up. If he crouched, there'd be no strike zone. Cut fastball below the knees inside, 1-0 oh the count. Mads is hitting 185. He's got five hits on the season, and three of them are triples. He also has three RBIs. It's the first time he's getting regular time, though. He seems to be the de facto starter at second base. Although Danny Mendick, I think, is going to get a lot of work. And Ricky Renteria doesn't want to forget about Larry Garcia. Mandrigal is quickly 1-2, and two, swung just underneath a four-seamer. They looked like he was trying to tag. Hard swing, 1-2 pitch. 
This one ripped down the first baseline. What a play, a diving stab at first base as the ball went over the base and was signaled fair by the umpire. That would have been a triple, at least a double. Instead, it's an unassisted three. Guarding the line against Madrigal. And Robert comes up now hitting 206. He's been figuring it out a little bit as well lately. He and Mandrigal and Mazzara had all had averages much lower a week ago. So the hope is that they're starting to figure it out here at the bottom of the order. He's 2-0 right now to Morton, who's working quickly. And now sends this one foul down the first base line, 2-1 the count. Two outs in the bottom of the second. Rays leading the White Sox 3-2. Rays had a three-run home run in the top of the first. Sox had a two-run home run from Grandal in the bottom of the first. The 3-1 pitch to Luis Robert. High and inside, the cut fastball misses badly. Roberts down the first base with two outs. He has speed. And with two outs, the White Sox may consider trying to see if he can get a base here early on in the count for T.A., Anderson's one for one. He singled in the first inning and scored on that two-run home run from Grandal. Morton sitting on 34 pitches right now with two outs in the bottom of the second. Looks in for the sign and now goes over to first for the pickoff move. Robert is back. So the Rays well aware of the MLB leader in stolen bases, Luis Robert. The next offering... It's down the middle for a strike. 0-1 the count. You can see Arrow Boston leaning in. Talking to Robert right now. They may be anticipating a pitch out. We've seen teams try to do that to slow him down. Look over at Robert. The pitch. Inside. Up in Anderson's face as he's brushed back. 1-1 one one the count. 1-1 one one count. There goes Robert. Inside pitch is called a strike. Underneath the tag is Robert. He is safe. So it's going to be one and two to Anderson. But T.A. now has a runner in scoring position as the MLB league leader in stolen bases does a pop-up slide, loses the helmet. He'll collect that and lead off a second base now. One and two to T.A. The pitch. Swung on and missed on a curveball away. Anderson goes down. So the Sox try to put some pressure on, but it's to no avail. After two, they trail. One run. Three to two race. And welcome into the family waterproofing third inning. Family waterproofing solutions. A proud advertiser on Sox in the basement. As Joey Wendell steps in and takes a curveball high and away, 1-0 the count. Part of their proceeds of every job goes to veteran and first responder organizations. Count now one and one on a strike that hits inside corner. Lopez into the wind. This one is looped out into left field. Jimenez on the run will make the play. So one out here in the top of the third. And Jose Martinez, who hit his first pitch of the first inning for a base hit and later scored on a three-run home run, steps up to the plate. The righty takes a curveball inside for a strike. Lopez into the wind, the pitch. Swung on and chopped foul down the third base line. 0 oh 2 quickly to Martinez. Lopez just misses on a fastball in the outside corner that he wanted. Rondal kind of looked back at the ump. The next offering on the way, chopped foul into the dugout along the first base line. Count remains 1 and 2 to Martinez. A low slider doesn't get him the chase. Count evens at two. Rondal calls for something high with his glove. The four-seamer would have been a strike that's fouled off. Count remains two and two. Long at bat here for Martinez. Who swings and misses at a changeup. Going right over the top of it. And Lopez sits him down for his third strikeout. And Austin Meadows, the man with the three-run home run in the first inning steps in as Lopez gets ready to throw his 40th pitch here with two outs in the top of the third and it's fouled off down the third base line 
Another thing about family waterproofing solutions, they have socks in the basement deals, including a lot of buy one, get one offers, swinging strike 0-2, and, and specific days where you get a large percentage off of your deal with family waterproofing solutions. Foul back into Grandal, the count remains 0-2. And, and remember, they'll do the whole thing over video feed with you when they do the estimate. They keep things safe and they do it right. Grounded back to Lopez over to first. Abreu steps on the bag after catching it from Lopez. The Rays go down one, two, three. We are midway through the third with the Sox trailing three to two. Foundation issues not properly handled can be costly. Family Waterproofing Solutions is owned by Ken, a veteran of the United States Marines, and his wife Maria making them a veteran-owned business and a female-owned business that will diagnose and repair wet or leaky basements. And while they're located on the sock side, Family Waterproofing services the entire Chicagoland area and Northwest Indiana. And now after taking time off to ensure they can do things safely and securely for you, Family Waterproofing is back in business and doing jobs. Plus part of the proceeds for every job that they do are donated to veteran and first responder organizations who support our frontline defenders. And currently, Socks in the Basement listeners have access to special pricing when they contact Family Waterproofing Solutions now, 708-330-4466, or visit them today at FamilyBasementWaterproofing.com. A beautiful sunset tonight. The sky is all kinds of purple and pink. Yasmani Grandal steps to the plate, one for one with that two-run home run in the first inning. Still batting from the left side against the righty Morton, who throws his 39th pitch to lead off the bottom of the third. And it's a ball outside and a curveball. Next pitch inside jams Grandal. It's popped down the third base line, and it'll be caught about 10 feet behind third for the first out of the inning. Jose Abreu's 0 for 1. He struck out in the first on three pitches. Hitting 276, slugging 551. Looks to have a better at bat here against Morton, and this four seamers high up at eye level for a ball. They have a shift on for Abreu. The Rays love the shift. We don't see teams do this against Jose very often. Second base shortstop and third base in between the second and third base bags, with Choi, the first baseman, basically playing second base. Pitch down the middle, a strike, one and one. The next one's low on a four-seamer. Two and one the count to Jose Abreu from Charlie Morton. Swings and misses at a split finger that was down at his shoelaces. And inside by a great margin. We've seen a lot of White Sox batters chase bad pitches against Morton. He must have a lot of movement on his balls. A low curveball misses. Abreu lays off. The count is full with Yoan Mancana standing on deck. The payoff pitch. Swung on and missed a four-seamer right down the middle. I don't know what he was looking for. Maybe he thought he was going to get a change or a curveball. Morton put it by him before he could get the swing around. He's about a half a tick off on that fastball down the middle, but he put it right there for him and challenged Abreu and sends him down with his second strike out of the game. Yoan Mancata steps up 0 for 1 and takes an inside split finger for a ball 1-0. Morton's a good pitcher. He's a really good pitcher. He's the kind of guy every year in a fantasy baseball league you're surprised guys don't get earlier because they all wait for him to fall off because of his age. And he just goes out and brings the same thing each and every year. Pitch is fouled off and then a curveball misses low. The count is 2-1 and one with two outs here in the bottom of the third inning. Morton with his 50th pitch of the game. An outside curveball, 3-1. and one. You see him using the curve a lot. You see him using the split finger sometimes, but he's never in the zone with the split finger. He's got a four-seamer and a two-seamer. As Mancata sends this one out in the shallow left field, but he will not get that one down. Nice play out there by Martinez. The inning is over. Sox go down 1-2-3. We go to the top of the fourth, trailing by one. Brandon Lowe is 0 for 1 with a strikeout in the first inning. He's got a 292 average. And Reynaldo Lopez throws an inside four seamer to the left handed hitter for a strike 0 and 1. The next offering 
four seamer just misses low and outside, one and one the count. Lopez entered the fourth with 43 pitches under his belt. This one's grounded to second base. A shift was on. Mandrigal is playing shallow right. Anderson behind the bag dives towards Mandrigal, makes the play, and sends it over to Abreu. Officially a 6-3 put out, although it was in the area of where the four would be standing. Now a four-seamer on the outside corner catches against Choi, the first baseman. 0-1 the count with one out in the top of the fourth. Lopez gave up a double, a single, a three-run home run, and since then has been pitching very well. Both starting pitchers struggled to get their first out. Since then, both have been very effective. One ball. Strike gets across. The next one's high and misses. One and two the count. Lopez working quickly. Here he goes. Fouled back and inside four seamer on the corner. Count remains one and two. Detroit leading Colorado five to one in Detroit in the seventh inning already. That game moving quickly, although it is on East Coast time. A low pitch misses two and two. Lopez again throws a change up just below the knees and doesn't get him to go after it. The count is full at three and two to Choi. The pitch. Chopped down the first baseline. Grabbed by Abreu. Flipped over to Lopez. That's an out. Two outs. Willie Adamas. Ground out in the first inning. Sitting 3-0-2 now. And the right-handed batter stands in as Lopez throws a four-seamer just off the plate outside. He's got four triples so far. He leads the American League. You know who has three? Nick Madrigal. Still amazed by that. Guy's got five hits and three of them are triples. Swung on and missed. One and one the count. Next pitch just misses outside. A curveball at 77 miles an hour. Adamas does not chase. The count is two and one. Now he goes after a low pitch. Grounds it to second base. Easy toss over for Madrigal. One, two, three go to Rays. Both pitchers have gotten it together now. Three hits for each, and the Rays lead 3-2 to two in the run column. Aloy Jimenez steps up. He's going to lead off the bottom of the fourth inning with the Sox down by a run. He's one for one with a double. Down the first baseline, they shifted on him the first time up, and he beat the shift. Now he takes a four-seamer high for strike one right across the letters. I thought that was high. It's going to go down as a strike, though. The Rays are back to that same shift. And I see Jimenez break it again. Inside two-seamer, misses one and one the count. I mean, it's just a soft ground ball right to where the first baseman would have been standing. It turns into a double. Now he's going to hit into the shift and still get it through out in the left field. Somehow getting between short and second. And they were both standing on the same side of second base. Jimenez with the seeing eye single. He must have had a joystick to get that throw. He's standing on first with no outs here in the bottom of the fourth. And Edwin Encarnacion comes up 0 for 1. And swings at one that goes back to the backstop. Jimenez is going to have to hold up because it hit the wall and bounced straight back to the catcher. It hit the backstop on one bounce and then shot right back to home plate. Jimenez would have been gone at second base. Wisely remaining there. And what's crazy is that was a strike. They're going to call it a strike, something that gets by the catcher. That's a terrible call. This one misses outside. One and one now the count to Encarnacion. Inside pitch by Morton almost hits Encarnacion. And he seems to be getting wild here. Sitting on 57 pitches. He steps off the mound and wipes his brow. So the big right-hander seems to have lost the strike zone. I think he got lucky on that strike on the, on the first pitch. I don't know how it goes past the catcher like that. And it's a strike. A low curveball misses. Very wisely, Encarnacion laying off. Is it to say, I don't think you can find the strike zone. The 3-1 pitch. Now he swings it and sends it up the middle for a base hit. Jimenez is in the second base. Encarnacion with the single in the center. And the Sox have something cooking here in the bottom of the fourth inning with no outs against Charlie Morton. And Nomar Mazara comes to the plate. Mazzaro struck out on three pitches his first time up, and two of them were nowhere near the strike zone. He needs some more patience here. 
takes an outside curveball, 1-0. and He laid off one that he would have gone after in that first at bat for sure. That was a close pitch. Clearly, he's trying to learn a lesson from his first at bat. Runners on first and second. For Seamer inside 2-0. and Encarnacion is basically a station-to-station runner. But a solid hit could score Jimenez. Although they'd have to be sure of it with no outs. Sox trail by one. Morton's thrown 61 pitches. He's 2-0 to Mazzaro with two on and no out. A high four-seam fastball misses 3-0. and And the Rays starter. Something happened there where he just seems to have lost it. Hopefully he doesn't get it back for a little bit. Let the Sox get some runs. Strike down the middle and get me over fastball. Mazzaro has taken it all the way. Although that would have been a pretty one to hit. It was just at waist level. It was straight. I bet you Mazzaro wishes he'd throw him another one like that. The 3-1 pitch on the way from Morton. Outside, misses on a curveball. He's frustrated and slams the glove with his hand. Pitching coach is out there immediately to go talk to him. And the bases are loaded with no outs here in the bottom of the fourth inning. With Nick Madrigal coming up. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is what they're saying to him. He's got a small strike zone. But also be aware that if you put it down the middle, this kid could hit it into the gap easily. He's got gapper power, number 92. As Madrigal stands in with the bases loaded, nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Jimenez on third, Encarnacion on second, Mazzaro's on first, and an inside four seamer just catches the inside corner. Low at the knees. 0-1 the count on a strike taken by Madrigal. Morton looks in. Swung on and pops straight up to the pitcher's mound. It'll be caught by the charging Choi, who almost misjudged that ball. He caught that ball at waist height, running across in front of Morton. That could have been a disaster. Here's the thing that's crazy. I'm surprised it wasn't an infield fly. How does a pop-up sit up there that long and they don't yell infield fly with the bases loaded? I feel like that's a shocking no-call as Luis Roberts steps in, hitting 206, and rips one down the first base line, 0-1. One out here in the bottom of the fourth inning, and the base is loaded. Anderson stands on deck. But you don't want to get to him and have two outs with the bases loaded when you start off with no outs and the bases loaded. A curveball just catches 0-2 quickly to Robert as Morton, after that conversation on the mound, is finding second life. The Sox can't let him off the hook here, trailing by one. The pitch. Chop back foul, another curveball. He's throwing a lot of curveballs to Robert. I would expect him to try to burn one by him at some point. Throws a low curveball, diving out of the zone. I think he was trying to see if Robert would go for it. He does not. A smart take by the rookie, who drew a walk and stole a base in his first at bat. The pitch on the way. Swung on and missed. He went for the curveball this time. Down at the shoelaces. He just couldn't lay off. The sixth strikeout for Morton. So the Sox get three on right away in this inning. And then a pop-up by Madrigal. And a strikeout by Robert. And Tim Anderson has to save the day and pick up the rookies. He's one for two. He's got two outs here and the base is loaded. First pitch curveball down the middle taken for a strike. He's one for two with a single and a run scored on the home run by Grandal in the first inning. Fans are up and excited here. Swung on and missed on a four-seamer up in the zone. He was underneath it, and he's quickly 0-2. Morton loaded the bases and is now trying to get out of the whole thing without giving up a run. And the Sox are helping him at the plate. A low pitch gets away a little, but not enough for Jimenez, to, who tried to come down the line and realized he wasn't going to make it. He was itching to try to score there. Ball didn't get away by enough. Anderson rips it into right field. No, a diving stab! A diving stab by the second baseman. In the outfield grass, he slides out into right field and flips it over to first in just enough time. And the Rays escape. A disappointing... Disappointing fourth inning for the Sox who load the bases and can't get a run. They had no outs and the bases loaded and nothing happened. And Yandy Diaz is going to come up here to lead off 
for the Rays, and the Rays still leave 3-2. to two. Lopez has 57 pitches under his belt as he starts the fifth inning. And the fifth inning is now called the DP3 Tech fifth inning. DP3 Tech is a really interesting company. You know, everybody's got to work from home now. They have partnered with Microsoft and now have a solution for you. You can migrate all your stuff from your company, no matter how big, how small you are. You can get everybody all on the same page using the same system instantly with one click, get everybody on the screen and talk with each other to get business done. Instantly with one click, be able to send stuff and show stuff to everybody that's on there with you. It's a really easy, really great system, and there's details coming up here in the middle of the inning. So get a pen and paper ready as Lopez strikes out the first batter swinging. Diaz goes down on a wicked curveball. And there's one out here in the top of the fifth inning. So information on how to contact DP3 Tech, get a free estimate. Find out what they can do for you. You know, when everything started, everybody's like, okay, what can I use? Facebook Messenger? I'm going to use some Zoom? Whatever. But we all know that that isn't as reliable, and it doesn't work for big groups, doesn't work for all your business needs. This is, a, this is something backed by Microsoft they've partnered up with, and they've come up with this great technology. They want to get the word out to Chicagoland, and they contacted the Sox at the basement and said, we want in. The catcher, Mike Zunico, stands in one for one. I'm sorry, check that. 0 for one, but he was one and one in the count. Takes a slider away, he's two and one in the count with one out in the top of the fifth. Lopez now gets a slider across at the knees, two and two. Reynaldo, dealing, throws this one in between the legs of Grandala, rolls back, three and two the count. This one sent out to center field. Robert plants himself underneath it. Can of corn for the second out. Trust me. You look at Nick Mandrigal out there at second base and Luis Robert in center field. They both have annoyed looks on their faces as Kevin Kermeyer, the nine hitter, who's 0 for 1 with the pop out in the second inning on the first pitch that he saw, stands in with two outs here on the top of the fifth and nobody on. And he swings at this pitch and it goes right up the middle for a base hit. They get it in quickly. He goes to second, and a bobbled ball on the throw-in. The ball hit Mandrigal on the glove, and he dropped the ball in front of him. I don't think he thought Kermeyer was coming, and somebody yelled, the runner's coming. And Mandrigal turned real quick and left the ball sitting there. I don't think it would have gotten him anyway. It was bounced into him. There's a runner on second with a fortuitous base-running move to take a single and turn it into a double with some heads-up base running against the White Sox who are sleeping there with two outs. Now Kermeyer with speed on second base. And this next one is lifted out in the center field. Robert coming in, he dives! Did he make the catch? He shows it to the up! Yes, he did! Yes, he did! Luis Robert, pin a star on it! Running straight in, lays out, and snow cones it as he slides across the grass, saving a run. Amazing! New challenges bring new technology. DP3 Tech has partnered with Microsoft to make things easier on you and your business. Imagine being able to get everybody together in a nice, easy, user experience friendly meeting room and being able to share whatever you want in the room with just one click. You can migrate from old legacy on-premises equipment right now to flexible, secure, work-from-home-friendly cloud services. Bring your group together faster, better, easier. Find out what DP3 Tech can do for you. Contact their cloud migrations team today, 312-896-2450, or email info at dp3tech.com. We are midway through the fifth inning. Sox got... Two outs right away in the top of the fifth. Then give up a double with some slappy play. And then Roberts saves a run with a great defensive play. And Charlie Morton comes out with 75 pitches so far here. And Yasmani Grandal will lead off and foul this one off down the third baseline. 0 and 1 the count. Sacks trailing 3 to 2. That's the score ever since the end of the first inning. When in the top of the first. A three-run home run by the Rays with no outs. First three guys got hits, including Austin Meadows with a three-run jack. And then the Sox get their first runner on base, and the second guy comes up and Grandal, he hits a two-run home run, and that's it. 
0-2 to ground down now. This one pitches low and inside. That's a ball. Morton ready for his 80th pitch into the wind. And here it comes. Chap towards short, scooped easily over to first. And Grandal is retired. One out now in the bottom of the fifth inning. And Jose Abreu comes to the plate. He's 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Morton's been all over him as he hits a cut fastball foul down the first baseline. He's 1 for 10 lifetime against Charlie Morton. Came into the game 1 for 8 against him. Some guys are just kryptonite. Morton is a Abreu's kryptonite. The 1-1 pitch, foul back. He's quickly 1-2 and two, another pitcher's count for Charlie Morton against Jose Abreu. A low curveball lands in the dirt. Abreu lays off it. 2-2, two two, the count is even. Sox had a big opportunity in the fourth inning, getting the bases loaded with no outs and couldn't get a runner across. Mandrigal, Robert, and Anderson failed to get a run across. As Yoan Moncada stands in, the on-deck circle hitting 325, waiting his turn. The count is full. The pitch to Abreu. Swung on and sent out deep into left field, tailing back. If it's fair, it's gone. It goes just foul. Two feet to the left of the foul pole, down the third baseline, and we will reset. Now, out in the right field, he pops a base hit. He's going to roll to the wall. He's going to come around second and try. And he is safe in the second base underneath the throw. And Abreu hits a double. He almost had a home run, but now he's got a double. His ninth of the season out in the right field. Put it right over Choi's head in the very next pitch after a very long strike. And Juan Moncada comes up now with one out and a runner on second base and Jose Abreu. He's 0 for 2. Normally hits better from the left side, although has not been able to figure out Morton just yet. First pitch ripped down the first baseline. Foul. And he ripped it. He's got a 323 batting average with runners in scoring position. He has one there now. As a high four-seamer misses, one and one the count. Abreu taking a big lead at second base, trying to get Morton's attention. Morton looks back at him. Double take, now the pitch. A low two-seamer, two and one. As Abreu trying to get in Morton's head. He is taking a big lead. And every time Morton looks at him, he doesn't move back. This one's chopped down the third baseline now into the tarp. Count even at two with one out to Yohan Mancata. Here in the bottom of the fifth. The pitch. Swung on and missed on a split finger that was out of the zone. He chased it and he knows it. Seven strikeout for Charlie Morton, who just keeps dangling it in front of the White Sox, but doesn't give him that other run that would tie this ball game. Aloya Menez now is two for two. He had a double against the shift. And a seeing eye single into the shift. They can't shift too much with Abreu on second. Swung on and sent out to the right center field gap. Oh, a nice play in right field ends the inning. That was a really pretty play running back towards the wall. Perfect positioning right there. The Rays escape again. It has been Houdini all night long for the Tampa Bay Rays and Charlie Morton, who's nearing 100 pitches but is through six and has only given up two runs to the White Sox. Reynaldo Lopez now enters the bottom of the sixth inning, sitting on only 70 pitches, and Jose Martinez comes up one for two. Lopez has given up three, though, and wants to continue to hold down the race. Fastball down the middle, taken for a strike. Martinez swung at the first pitch in the first inning for a base hit and later scored on a home run, then had a very long at-bat that ended in Lopez getting him. It's an inside four seamer, moves in on the hands, and it's a ball, one and one. Cleveland, that game was final already out there in Cleveland. The Rangers doing us a favor and beating them five to nothing tonight. Lyles over Carrasco, as the count is now two and one with Lopez on the hill. A pretty night, not a lot of clouds, but it's cold. The start of this game in the mid-40s, with the sun down, I guarantee you, we're at 40. 
It may drop into the 30s before this game is over. Most of the sacks wearing long sleeves. Grandal, short sleeves. He's decided it's May and he doesn't care. Ball's down the third baseline, foul. The count is full to Jose Martinez, who's made a nice play out in the outfield already for this Rays team. And now he lifts this one into the left center field gap. Robert, though, on his horse, gets over there and makes the play. It was directly between him and Jimenez. And he made it. Here's Austin Meadows. He had a three-run home run in the first inning. He's one for two on the game as a changeup is swung on and missed. 0-1 won the count. He's four for nine now against Reynaldo Lopez in his career. And he takes a strike low at the knees on a four-seamer. 0-2 the count with one out here in the top of the sixth. Lopez tries him outside on a curveball. He doesn't chase it. One and two. The Jackets are on now. I see hot chocolate being served out in the stands. A little hot chocolate and a churro. That's what I would do on a night like this. Swung on and missed on a four-seamer. Right across the letters. Fifth strikeout for Lopez. Two outs here in the bottom of the sixth inning. So Meadows goes down. And Raylo now will face Brandon Lowe, who's 0 for 2. And the lefty takes a four-seamer high and outside for a ball. Struck out, rounded out. He's hitting 289 now. Got five home runs on the season. He's a nice little player. Lowe has scored seven times in the last nine games. He's 2-0 after that pitch misses. And Lopez into the line quickly. And on the way. And I can't believe that was a ball inside on a strike. And Lopez frustrated. And he's getting squeezed with two outs here in the sixth inning. And nobody on. Does that look like a strike to me? And it went for a ball. 3-0 the count. Now the offering. Check swing. It's a strike. Lower outside portion. 95 miles an hour he's still throwing it here. That was his 85th pitch of the game. The 3-1 pitch. Inside taken. Lopez disgusted. Talking into his glove. Probably saying something nasty to it. Now he takes the ball and he looks at it like there's something wrong with the ball. As G-Man Choi stands in. The first baseman's 0-2 with a pop-out and a ground-out. He's got a runner on first. And Brandon Lowe. Lowe's got pretty good speed with the ball in play, but he's not a big stolen base guy. He's a four-seamer, misses low. Choi's 0 for 2. The pitch on the way. Misses outside. 2-0 and now to Choi. We saw this problem. I can't remember which pitcher we saw this with. I want to say we saw this with Dylan Cease. He got the two outs the other night in the sixth inning, gave up back-to-back-to-back to back to back against the Orioles. All of a sudden, things fell off when he was that close to finishing the sixth inning, and he was rolling with his pitch count. Renteria's got two arms up now. He doesn't want this game to get away. Lopez gets this one across for a strike. The count is even, two and two, with two outs here on the top of six and a runner on first. And here comes the pitch to Choi. Inside curveball misses, three and two, with Adames on deck. Lopez... Gets him the fly out to left field. Jimenez is underneath it. He will make the catch. Looked like he was fighting off the lights, but he's able to make the catch. Crouched a little bit going into that one. Stop trying to scare me, Aloy. Midway through to six. Sox still trail three to two. Brendan McKay will come in. 18 games so far for the youngster. 38 and two-thirds innings pitched. He's got a two-and-one record. He also has a save. He's got an ERA of 6.05. 31 strikeouts to 15 walks. And again, this is what happens in the Sims season. You get a guy like McKay who's coming off of Tommy John, and yes, he is going to be available this year, but he's much like Carlos Rodan. I'm shocked that he's up here playing in May. And if he was up here in May, it'd be like his first or second start or game. He's a starting pitcher that figures to be a big part of their rotation. But he sits in there as a long relief pitcher In this 2020 season you're listening to, Edwin Encarnacion takes a ball outside. Now a four-seamer low, 2-0 the count quickly from Brendan McKay. McKay is a lefty. It may change some strategy here for Renteria. One guy that has been eating lefties up has been Adam Engel. And with Mazzara on deck, they seem to platoon with each other. 
It'd be interesting to see what he does here as Encarnacion draws the walk. And yeah, they're going to call Mazzara back quickly. And they're going to replace him. And Adam Engel grabs a bat. It's such a simple move to make. The way that Engel's been hitting, especially against lefties. He did well for us against a lefty in that Orioles series. He was arguably the player of the game on Sunday, even though he wasn't even in the game at the end. But Mazzara came in in that game and got a pinch hit walk because of the change of the pitcher. And they're just interchangeable out there in right field. He's quickly, though, 0-2 as he takes the first two pitches. Inside corner, outside corner, borderline calls, both going the way of McKay with Encarnacion on first base. There are no outs in the bottom of the sixth inning. The feeling has to be that if you bring in a guy like McKay, he may finish the game. He's got some stamina. He's a starter, basically, in a relief role. He throws a curveball low below the knees, one and two the count. So Engel now will move into right field, and he's batting here. Swung on and missed. He strikes out on a curveball inside. He was in the zone, up at the letters. A tough pitch to hit. So Engel, who's been deadly against left-handed pitching, strikes out here in a pinch hit roll. But he improves the defense out in right field, and in a close game, you can't be mad about that. Here's Nick Mandrigal. He's 0 for 2, and he swings and sends this one to second base, scooped over to second to the shortstop, and over to first. One pitch and a 4-6-3 double play. Mandrigal has got to be frustrated with what he's done so far in this game. Kelvin Herrera will take the seventh inning here for the White Sox. He has 15 and two-thirds innings over 12 games and a 2.87 earned run average. 13 strikeouts of seven walks. Lefties are hitting 160 against him. Righties are hitting 240. He's got a righty up there right now in Willie Adamas. He throws an inside pitch for a ball, 1-0. Herrera has been very good early on this season after a shaky first two appearances. Since then, he's been solid. He's getting a roll now later on in games. Four-seamer up. It's a ball, borderline call at the letters. Now a strike and a changeup inside, two and one. The Yankees win at home in New York against the Pirates, five to one in interleague play. That's just unfair. Those are two very different teams. This one sent down the line, and it's a fair ball out in the right field. Adamas is held, though, to a single on a sharp defensive play by Adam Engel. He gets over quickly. As that ball gets underneath Abreu's glove trying to guard the line. He gets over quickly, gets a good throw in, and holds him to a single. So the first batter is on against Herrera. In a 3-2 game with the Sox trailing ever since the first inning. Inside fastball at the knees, a strike. 0-1 the count to Yandy Diaz, who's 0-2 with a strikeout and a ground out. Hitting 252. Adamas, quick. On the base bats, but not much of a stolen base guy. He's an inside cut fastball, just misses. One and one to count. But he'll go first to third on you really quick. Four seamer misses, two and one now. The pitch from Herrera. Slider gets across two and two now to Diaz. Herrera checks the runner at first. The pitch. Swung on and set on the right field for a base hit. So back-to-back -back hits given up by Herrera. Angle gets it in quickly and holds the runner at second. First and second now with no outs in the seventh inning. They're going to go out and talk to Herrera. You give up two hits right away, your pitching coach is going to come out and ask you what's going on. Herrera now ready to go. Throws one down the middle. It's immediately set on the left field for a base hit. The runner of diamonds coming around to Jimenez to the plate. And he does not get it there in time. The throw is offline and the Rays have scored. So Herrera comes in, gives up three hits right away in the top of the seventh. The Rays extend the lead now by two. And I was just sitting there telling you he's been looking really good. He gets a chance here in the seventh inning. And now Evan Marshall's going to come in. He's got 12 games under his belt. 16 innings pitched. An ERA of 2.81. Struck out 11, walked three. Opposing batters are hitting 190 against him, lefty or righty. Kevin Kermeyer steps in, one for two in the first pitch on the way. 
is a changeup low and away taken for a ball. Runners on first and second. The Rays have one across in this inning. Herrera comes in, faces three batters, gives up three hits and an earned run, and leaves two on. Marshall checking the runner at second base, the pitch on the way. Just misses outside on a curveball, 2-0. Oh. Kermeyer hitting 219 with runners in scoring position. Sox bullpen has been so good so far this season. As the sinkers fouled off from Marshall, 2-1 and one the count. And Herrera has been so solid. It's disappointing to see him come out in the seventh inning and get the Rays going. Lopez had a quality start. Even with the three-run home run, as this one's fouled off down the third base line, the three-run home run before he got his first out. He didn't give up any more runs through six. As this ball gets by, and the runners are going to advance 90 feet, Grandal lets one get by. It's going to be called a wild pitch from Marshall. So it was more Marshall than Grandal, according to the official score. The count is full now with runners on second and third and no outs here in the seventh. And the usually reliable White Sox bullpen is struggling right now. The pitch on the way. Down into right field for a base hit. Engel on his way over to third with the throw is going to get the trailing runner for the first out of the inning. But it's 5-2. Nice play by Adam Engel. Realizing he didn't have a play at home, he gets the runner trying to go from second to third. Next one grounded to Mandrigal over to first for the second out. So now there's two outs here in the top of the seventh inning. So White Sox relief pitching coming in and giving up two runs so far here in the seventh inning. But now we have two outs of Marshall trying to get Jose Martinez. It was a nice play by Angle. He came in. That ball drops right in front of him. He didn't really have a chance at it. A lot of guys would say, I'm going to try to get that runner coming home. But instead, he realized that the runner had already broken. On third base, he had decided, as this one's grounded to Moncada, he will scoop, send over to first base for the third out of the inning, and the Sox are out of it. He realized that runner was going to score. So he went for the trailing runner going to third from second, and he got him for the first out. The Sox now are out of the seventh inning. As we go to the bottom of the seventh inning now, and the Sox get a chance to hit. Double barrel action going on for the Rays, but McKay comes out again, and Luis Robert, who's 0 for 1 with a walk, will stand in and take a four-seamer below the knees inside 1-0. and White Sox have trailed this entire game. They were losing by three. After the top of the first, a two-run home run by Grandal. Right away, cut it to 3-2. to two. They've wasted opportunities with men all over the base pass, including an inning in which they had the bases loaded and nobody out and couldn't get a run across. Roberts swings and misses. The count is 1-2. and two. And now last inning, they give up two runs. A shaky appearance by Kelvin Herrera. Evan Marshall did his best, but he still ends up letting another run get across that was Herrera's before he gets out of the inning. Now Robert cracks this one down the third baseline, hooking foul just before the pole. Count remains one and two. And now the Sox trail by three again. Robert lifts this one in the right. Broken bat. Did he catch that in right field on the dive? He did catch that in right field on the dive. Austin Meadows came in and laid out. It wasn't as pretty as Roberts was, but he does make the catch against Robert. So both Meadows and Robert have made big diving stabs, although Roberts really saved a run. And there's one out here in the bottom of the seventh inning, and Tim Anderson in the top of the order are up. Anderson's one for three, and he grounds out immediately to short. One pitch, one out for T.A. And there's two outs in the seventh as the Sox are going down quickly. Sometimes it isn't your night. I'm not packing it up yet, though, folks. We've seen the White Sox, and this offense group runs together and come back in games. It didn't feel like they were going to come back and win that game against Baltimore on Sunday, and they ended up doing just that. Grandal puts it down the first baseline. Foul, 0-1. The use of McKay reminds me of what the Angels were doing to the White Sox. Having so many starters, they can bring in a guy from the bullpen and let him go a bunch of innings, and he's effective. And that's what they're able to do with McKay here. That ball misses, 1-1, one and one, the pitch to Grandal. Chop foul into the dugout down the first baseline. 1-2 and two the count, two outs, bottom of the seventh inning. Sox trailing by three. Brendan McKay into the line, the lefty. Gets Grandal to foul this one back. Swung on and sent out into the gap in right center field. It's going to get down, cut off though before it gets to the wall. A nice play in center. Stopping that one before it gets by. But Grandal's got a single and he's on. We've seen a lot of two-out hits by the White Sox. 
They don't go down easy, but stringing together that next hit to get a run has been a problem. And here's Jose Abreu. Abreu, one for three with a double in the fifth inning. He struck out the first two times against Morton. Then he had a double against him. He did that with two outs and tried his best to antagonize the pitcher enough to get in, but could not. And a four-seamer misses high, 1-0. This is the first time McKay has faced him. I'm sure Abreu is happy to not see Charlie Morton out there. Even with the double he hit, he was struggling all day against him. The 1-0 pitch. Inside misses 2-0 now with two outs to Abreu. An O for the long ball here. Be nice to get right back into this game. Swung on, knocked down on a diving play at first. Abreu almost beats the throw as there was confusion as to who was going to cover the bag. Choi looking at his pitcher, and his pitcher had stopped. Choi crawls to first base and tags it with his hand. End of the seventh. Sox trail by three. Jace Fry will come into the game. He's got 14 games, eight innings only, a 4.50 earned run average. He's 2-1, and one, 15 strikeouts to five walks. Opposing hitters are hitting 100 against him, thereabouts. You combine the lefty and the righty stats, and I'm eyeballing it, imagining that he faces far more lefties, because that's behind a specialist that he is. He's got a lefty here in Austin Meadows, who's one for three with a home run in the first inning. He's 0-1 right now. Swings at the next offering, lifts it out into right center field. Robert will call off angle and make the longer run than make the catch. After that diving catch, he has been everywhere. He uh, must have decided, if I can't help with my bat today, I am going to go out there and make some great plays. That was another really good play. So two pitches, and Fry gets the first batter. Brandon Lowe, another lefty, steps in, and he will go after him, the pitch. Sent out to third base. Makata throws it over, almost airmails it. But Abreu jumps up and makes the catch and lands on first in plenty of time. Two outs. As G-Man Choi, who's 0 for 3, stands in. And Jace Fry with the pitch. He gets three lefties in a row here. And Ricky Renteria sends him out there. He's only thrown five pitches now. He's 0 and 1 to the third batter with two outs. Choi now chops this one down the third baseline, just foul. And that was borderline. I thought that was a fair ball. Strike three and a cut fastball inside. He throws Choi, who just leans back and realizes that he struck out on three pitches looking. Midway through the eighth, Jace Fry has him excited here. Now let's get some runs. Oliver Drake going to come in for the Rays. 12 games, 0-2 record, 14 innings, 3.21 earned run average. 13 strikeouts to four walks. Righty's hitting 350 against him. Lefty's hitting 250. Mancata likes to hit lefty against right-handed pitcher, so he'll step in. 0 for 3 with a strikeout in the fifth inning. Swings and misses at a split finger. Is way out in front of it. 0 and 1 the count here in the bottom of the eighth inning with the Sox trailing 5 to 2. The pitch. Out in the left field, a base hit for Mancata. The Rays decided to shift him. Now he's on his way into second. He gets there in plenty of time. The Rays decided to shift him. He gets his 10th double because he puts it right down the third base line where there's nobody standing and out into an outfield where the left fielder is standing in left center. The Sox have beaten the shift multiple times tonight. The shift has not been a problem for them. As Aloy Jimenez comes up, two for three, he beat the shift when they shift to the other side, and he put it down the first baseline earlier in the game for a double of his own, and a split finger inside and low, taken for a strike, 0-1 oh, the count from Oliver Drake. You gotta figure at some point these bats are gonna break through against one of these raised pitchers. On a cold night, the bats are cold for the Sox. They have not done anything since getting two runs on a two-run home run. When the first batter gets on an Anderson and Grandal, the second batter of the game for the Sox, Hits a two-run home run. That was a long time ago. Pitch misses. One and one now the count to Jimenez. Inside misses on a four-seamer. Two and one. Tonight's attendance, 17,581. Most have stuck around, although it is cold, cold, cold on this Tuesday night. Swung on, foul back a four-seamer. That was right down the middle. Jimenez 
Wants that one back. He could have done a lot with that pitch. Two and two the count now with Mankata leading off of second base. Chop back foul. No outs here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Jimenez hanging in there against Oliver Drake. Mankata with a real big lead at second base. Long look at him. Now the pitch. Inside split finger misses. Three and two the count with Encarnacion standing on deck. The pitch to Jimenez. Sent straight back foul into the upper deck. Will reset with the 3-2 count. Another payoff pitch to Aloy Jimenez. Ripped up the middle. That's a base hit. Makata going to come around third and head for home. He is safe by a mile. And the White Sox cut this lead by a little. It is 5-3. Jimenez with a single right up the middle. And that is something he's been doing a lot of early on in the season when he was red hot with the home runs. He was always trying to hit a home run. But deep in counts, you see him choke up a little bit on the bat and send it right up the middle now. He almost killed Drake. That ball missed his head by about a half an inch. As Encarnacion stands in with a runner on first and Jimenez. He's one for two and he takes a strike down the middle from Oliver Drake. 0-1 oh the count. Still no outs here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Aaron Bummer warming in the pen for the White Sox. Drake checks the runner, Jimenez. The pitch. Rip the third. Nice play. They're going to try to turn two, and they will because Edwin Encarnacion is very, very slow. So we go from no outs and a runner on to two outs and nobody on. As Adam Engel comes up 0 for 1 with a strikeout in the sixth inning. And the right hander, Drake, stands in. And tries to sit down angle yet again. Low and outside cut fastball misses. 1-0 the count. The pitch. Low split finger misses. 2-0. Angle lays off a split finger pitch. 3-0. So we'll see if he gets the green light with Madrigal. Standing on deck. Drake checks the sign. Taking his time out there. The pitch on the way. Misses outside in a four seamer. He walks angle on four straight pitches. If anything, we're getting closer to turning the lineup over with Mandrigal coming up here. He's 0 for 3 with a ground out in the 6th inning. And I'd much rather see him here in the 8th with 2 outs and a chance to still do something as he's hit 3 triples so far and has driven in some runs in limited action since he's come up and now is getting some regular playing time. I'd rather see him now because if he does well, great. And if he doesn't, we're much closer to the top of that order for the Sox. Roberts on deck, the nine hitter, and then it gets back up to the top. Four seamer at the knees goes for a strike taken. 0 and 1 the count to Mandrigal. Next offering an outside split finger pitch. 1 and 1 the count. Pitch out for Angle. Now it's 2 and 1. So they thought Angle was going to go. He doesn't. Here comes the 2 1 pitch on the way. Throw over to first base. He's not going anywhere. They're very concerned about Adam Engel. Nick Mandrigal should take offense. Here's the pitch. Engel goes, swung on and fouled back. A hit and run was on. It was a good split finger pitch. It was a good pitch to hit. Mandrigal just did not come through. Two and two now the count. Now they're very aware of Engel. As this next one comes in, Mandrigal swings and misses at a split finger at the knees and he goes down. The last two pitches, split fingers inside, were both in the zone. Madrigal just cannot catch up with them. After eight, the Sox have cut the lead but still trail five to three. Aaron Bummer comes in for his 16th appearance of the season. He's one and one with two saves. He's got 17 innings pitched and a 1.59 earned run average. 24 strikeouts to four walks. That's incredible. And righties are hitting 125 against the left-hander. So he doesn't care if you're a righty or if you're a lefty. And the lefty throws one by Willie Adamas. Swinging strike to the right-handed hitting Adamas. Next one's a low cut fastball laid off one and one. I had a feeling we'd see Fry and Bummer tonight with a very heavy left-handed hitting lineup for the Rays that they send up there against right-handed starters. It'll be much the same tomorrow with Lucas Giolito on the mound for the Sox. And then they'll probably switch a lot of things up for Dallas Keuchel in game three. The one-two pitch. Sent down the third baseline, hooking foul into the stands. 
Count remains one and two. The next offering. Swung on and missed on a cut fastball in on the knees. He twists him up and Bummer gets the strikeout. The Blue Jays are winners four to three at home in Toronto. Against the Orioles, Boston has gone final at home in Fenway against the Angels, a two to one game. And I'm surprised because both those teams can hit this year. A sinker low misses. Want to know the count to Yandy Diaz, who's one for three with a single and a run score. The Tigers won their game against Colorado six to three. Kyle Freeland, who just sat us down, took his first loss of the season in Detroit. A long foul ball down the third base line. The count is even at one. Bummer with the pitch. Diaz lays off a sinker below the knees. Two and one. The Twins blew out the Giants, who we see next. We see him on the road. The Twins have him at home. They won 16 to two tonight. Man, that team can hit. 3-1 count. Bummer with the pitch. Foul back. The count is full. So Diaz worked his way into a hitter's count. Now the count is full. Bummer with the payoff pitch. Cracked down the third baseline. Foul off of the tarp. Count remains full. Bummer checks the sign from Grandal and delivers. Ripped down the third baseline. Foul. Count remains 3-2. The next offering, also down the line foul. Eight pitches in this at bat, and Diaz has put three of them deep down the third base line, but well enough foul that I wasn't nervous. Now he swings and misses at a cut fastball. Bummer spins. Very excited about that one. He had to work for it. Nine pitches to get the strikeout. He's got two strikeouts to the first two batters he faces here in the top of the ninth inning. Trying to give his team every chance to erase the two-run deficit that they have in the bottom of the ninth. Sox walked off on Sunday night. Can they do it again? Or at least tie it and send this thing into extras. Bummer. Gets Zunino to swing and miss at that one. Inside at the hands. 0-1 the count. The Mets blew out the Reds today in New York. 7-0. That's the final out there. A lot of blowouts. Sox in a close one. Inside cut fastball misses one and one. St. Louis in the ninth inning. Top of the ninth trying to finish their game against San Diego. We're going to see them in the next week out in San Diego. They're winning two to one. Swung on and missed the sinker. Zanino is one and two in the count. Two outs in the top of the ninth inning. The pitch on the way. Swung on and missed a cut fastball down the middle. He just couldn't catch up to it. Bummer strikes out the side here in the top of the ninth. The crowd is pumped. Let's get some runs. We go to the bottom of the ninth, chasing two here on the south side of Chicago. Nick Anderson comes in 13 games so far. This is his 14th appearance. 10 saves and 11 opportunities. He's got one loss, no wins, 11 and two thirds innings, and a 3.09 earned run average. Luis Robert will lead off against him here in the bottom of the ninth. The nine hitter with Anderson and Grandal behind him. He's 0 for 2 with a walk today. He takes the first pitch outside a slider from the big righty, Anderson. 1 and 0 the count. The pitch on the way. Down the middle of four seamer taken by Robert. Count evens at 1. It'll be Robert, TA, Grandal, and hopefully we'll see uh, Abreu and Mancata. Deep out in the left field, tailing back towards the wall. He looks up, it's going to go off the top of the wall. Robert's already at second base. He rounds looking to third and goes back. A stand-up double for the rookie, his fourth of the season. And we got a runner on second base with no outs. That one almost cleared. It goes right off the top of the wall. Right where the White Sox bullpen is, out in left, Tim Anderson will come up to the plate. Robert leads off a of second base. Anderson takes the first pitch low of four seamer. 1-0 the count. He's hitting 3-14 with runners in scoring position. He, of course, is hitting well over 300 for the season as well. Next pitch grounded to third base. Robert's going to have to retreat back to second. A 5-3 put out. Anderson unable to advance him. The name of the game is get a hit, get on, get him over, get him in. 
Rondell comes up two for four. He's got a home run, a single, and two RBIs. He had a two-run home run earlier in this game. Wouldn't you love to see the second one to tie it up? One out here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Nick Anderson into the wind in the pitch. A low sinker misses. 1-0 the count. Abreu waits on deck. This is what you wanted. If you could get a runner on right away and get the top of your lineup in last year's AL batting champ, a red-hot Yasmane Grandal and Abreu and Mancada coming up, you had a chance. Robert did his job. Anderson was out. An inside pitch called a strike, 97 miles per hour. Right on the inside corner to Grandal, he took it for the strike, one and one. Crowd is up, the pitch. Low in the dirt, swung on for some strange reason. Robert is going to advance the third. The real problem here is that that looked like it was a ball all the way. Grandal swings at a bad pitch. It gets away, and he advances the runner to third. But I wish Grandal wouldn't have swung. Because no matter what happens with Luis Robert, you still need the guy at the plate. He's the tying run, and he's 1-2 and two in the count. Robert stands on third, the pitch. Outside, curveball, misses 2-2. Two and two. The next offering. Low misses. The count is full now to Yasmani Grandal. Standing in the left-handed batter's box against the righty Anderson. With Abreu taking his warm-up swings on deck. This is a big payoff pitch here for the White Sox as they try to come back in the ninth inning. The pitch on the way. Swung on and lifted down the first baseline. That will hook just foul. It was close. He watched it for a moment. Everybody did. The 3-2 pitch again. Swung on and chopped back. That would have been ball four. It was low. He's protecting the plate. We're going to do it again. High drama here in the ninth inning for the Sox. Inside pitch misses. Grandal will go down the first. I imagine them bringing in a pinch runner for him. Danny Mendick will go down and run at first base. He's the fastest option right now coming off the bench. You don't want the double play. That would be a heartbreaker, but Abreu's up there right now. First and third, one out, trailing by two. First pitch from Anderson misses high with a four-seamer as Mancada takes his swings in the on-deck circle. Sox trailing by two coming to this inning. Have two on and one out as they try to make the comeback here in the ninth. The next pitch from Anderson. Chop back foul, a slider on the outside corner. One and one. Abreu has two strikeouts in this game. Also a double. Inside pitch misses. Two and one now the count. So a hitter's count. Nick Anderson looks like he's feeling a little bit of the pressure. He's already blown one save this year. He has 11 though that he has successfully converted. We aren't there yet. The tying runs on first. The winning runs at home as Abreu fouls this one back. And Roberts over at third base. 2-2 two, two count. One out, bottom of the ninth. The pitch. Chop foul down the first base line. 93 mile an hour sinker at the knees. That would have been a strike. Abreu continues to protect. Will reset. Here's the pitch. Chop back foul. He went for the sinker in the exact same place. Feels like he's setting him up for something. I don't expect to see that a third time. Two and two still the count. The pitch on the way. High fastball. He lays off it on a check swing. The count is full to Abreu with Mancada hitting 328, standing on deck. Roberts on third. The tying run, Mendick on first. The winning run at the plate. Full count, one out, bottom of the ninth inning. The pitch from Anderson. High and he misses it, and Abreu will walk down to first base. And Leury Garcia will now come in and run at first base because he's the winning run. So we've got a lot of speed. Robert on third, Mendick on second. Garcia in for Abreu on first. One out, bottom of the ninth. Moncada to the plate, the pitch. Swung on and set into left field. It's a base hit. One run scores. Mendick coming around. The plate, the plate. He is safe, and this game is tied in the bottom of the ninth inning. Moncada takes the first pitch in the left field. Base knock. Garcia advances the second. The winning run stands on second base. And this game is tied. The Rays will make a change. Diego Castillo comes in, 15 and two thirds innings. He's got a 4.02 earned run average. He's one and one. And 
Eloy Jimenez trying to be the hero now with one out in the bottom of the ninth. First pitch cracked out deep. It's heading back to the wall. It is caught at the wall. The runner is going to advance to third. Garcia's in the third. He just missed it, folks. It was caught on the run going into the wall in center field. An exciting moment. I thought we walked it off there. Still with a runner on third. The speed of Garcia allows him to get there. And now a ball gets fired to the backstop. Garcia comes halfway down. But the ball bounced back off of the backstop like it did earlier. It did not die back there. It came right back to the catcher. Mancada advanced from first to second. And now they're going to intentionally walk Encarnacion to get to Adam Engel. So Engel comes to the plate with two outs in the bottom of the ninth inning. He's 0 for 1 with a walk in the eighth. He's got the bases loaded as they elect to put Encarnacion on first. Mancada's on second. Garcia's on third. We came so close to that ball getting over that Jimenez hit a few pitches ago. Two outs, Bob in the ninth. Low slider misses, 1-0 oh the count. Angles hitting 5-56 with runners in scoring position. A base knock wins this game. A walk wins this game. The 1-0 pitch. Swung on and missed on a four-seam fastball. Thigh level down the middle. The count is even at one as Diego Castillo came into this game. Almost gave it up immediately to Jimenez. He gets new life. And now he's got an angle here with two outs. Swung on it, set down the third base line. They're going to say that's foul. A close one. Right over the bag. They're going to say it's foul. One and two the count. That would have won it. Next pitch swung on and missed. He went down on a slider tailing away. The Sox tie it up and have the bases loaded and can't get the last run across. We're going to extras. Tied up at five. All right, lots of things going on here in the 10th inning. Let's tell you what's going on first with the pitcher. Alex Colome is going to come in. 10 and a third innings pitched. Six saves and eight opportunities. He's just trying to hold him here. He's got an ERA of 3.48. James McCann moves behind the plate. Danny Mendick stays in the game and goes to third base. And Mancada moves over to play first. So Yoan Mancada will become the new first baseman with Abreu out of the game. McCann slides into the spot where Leary Garcia was. Mendick remains in at third. And Colome's one and one quickly to Kevin Kiermaier, kicking off the top of the eighth. I'm sorry, top of the tenth inning. Kiermaier's two for three and swings and misses at a four seamer. One and two the count. So the Sox have used the entire bench at this point. They'd have to send a pitcher out there to play a position if they have any problems. Change up on the outside misses, two and two. It's like an all-star game. Everybody's getting to play. This one's fouled off. Count remains even at two. An exciting ninth inning. The Sox get two runs. Unable to get the third, though, unfortunately. This one's also fouled off. Now you got a few guys out of the game. Abreu's no longer in the game. Grandal's no longer in the game. Sent out into center field. Roberts underneath it. He will make the play. There's one gone. Mazzaro's no longer in the game. He's out. He started today. And Leary Garcia came in as a pinch runner and is now out because they ran out of places to put him and they needed to bring in a catcher. Joey Wendell started us off today with a double. Eventually scored on a three-run home run. He's not gotten a hit since. He's one for four on the night as we go into extras here on the south side of Chicago. Exciting last couple nights here at the ballpark. They walked off. That's a swing and a miss. One and two. They walked off on Sunday, these Sox did. They tie it coming from behind. Get two runs in the ninth inning tonight as an inside four-seamer misses two and two. But for the second time tonight, the bases were loaded when the third out was made. As the Sox got a timely couple of hits there, but couldn't get that one extra one, and now we got to go into extras. Count is even at two. The pitch. Popped up down the first baseline. Mancada underneath it. He will catch it. So Yohan playing a little first base. And I'll be honest with you folks, before you start questioning this, He's the only guy besides Encarnacion 
that is listed as first base being one of his secondary positions. And I'm not putting anybody out of position in this game. We want this win. Jose Martinez steps in, takes a strike inside. 0-1 the count. Next pitch misses inside on a cut fastball. 1-1. One one. If you're wondering who's up for the White Sox, next inning, it's Mandrigal, Robert, and Anderson. Robert started off the ninth with a double off the top of the wall, eventually scoring. Mandrigal has not had a very good night. Like I said, though, there are no more pinch hitters. 2-1 pitch, flied out softly to short. Anderson makes the play. We go to the bottom of the 10th, all tied up and needing one to walk it off here in the south side of Chicago. Extra innings in the entire game brought to you by Cork and Carey at the park. 33rd in Princeton, a south side tradition. Get some Vittles, award-winning burgers, and great food. Use Grubhub or Cork and Carey at the park.com. Nick Mandrigal comes up and takes a four-seamer low that bounces back to the backstop. 1-0 the count. Diego Castillo remains in the game. He got the raise out of the ninth inning. Although the first pitch he threw to Jimenez in relief was so close to getting out of here. Or at least getting over the head of his center fielder, Kiermaier, and winning this game. 2-0 now the count to Mandrigal. Next pitch misses high and inside. Borderline call goes Mandrigal's way. 3-0 for the tiny second baseman for the Chicago White Sox. A strike at the knees on a sinker. 3-1 he was taking that pitch. Just trying to get on. If you could get him on, you'd have great speed on board to lead off this 10th inning. The pitch. Misses low. He thought he had it. He started walking down first baseline. Umpires don't like it when rookies do that. He better say I'm sorry. He's got to get back in there. Full count out of Mandrigal. He's taken two close pitches for strikes. And now chops this one foul down the first baseline, protecting. Because he doesn't know what's a strike anymore. The pitch. Lifted in the right field. Play is going to be made easily by Austin Meadows. There's one gone. Luis Robert comes up one for three with a walk. He has a double and a run scored and a stolen base today. First pitch down the middle of slider taken for a strike. The next offering. Outside slider misses. One and one. Carson Fulmer is warming in the pen, but there is a possibility we see Colome again. This one's lifted down the right field line, hooking towards the pole, and it will just get foul. One and two to Robert. I can see the one and waiters out there just stretching, trying to get that one in. Next one is lifted on a pop fly, Major League pop to second base. Back on the grass now, the catch is made. So the first two batters go down for the White Sox here in the bottom of the 10th inning. Tim Anderson comes up. Anderson made the first out of the ninth. He now stands up here with two outs in the 10th. Takes a pitch outside for a ball. 1-0. Coming into this game tonight, Jimmy Cordero and Steve Ciszek were like emergency options, as I was described to me. They don't have all their energy back after this past weekend. They were used a lot. Cordero was not 100%, neither was Ciszek. So that just leaves Fulmer at 100%. And Colome on the mound. You don't know how long this one's going to last. Anderson lifts this one into right field. Can of corn for Meadows. The Sox go down 1-2-3 here in the 10th inning. And we'll go to the top of the 11th here on the south side of Chicago. It's starting to thin out a little bit because it's cold and it's a weeknight and the kids got to go to a school. Or do they? End of 10. 5-5. Five, five. Austin Meadows is 1-4. for four. He had a three-run home run ages ago in the first inning for the Rays. Getting them off to a 3-0 lead. Then Lopez settles down and doesn't give up anything else. Finishes with six innings pitched. Three runs given up a quality start. It seems like that was ages ago as we're in the top of the 11th. And Alex Colome remains on the mound and gets two quick strikes on Meadows. So the closer is going to at least start off this inning. As the Sox are running low on arms. Next pitch is foul back on a cut fastball. 0-2, the count remains. 
I would be almost certain that no matter what, Fulmer comes into this game in the 12th, and he might have to come in sooner as Colomi now gives up a base hit in the right field. And the leadoff man is on in Meadows. Ricky Renteria sticking with his closer. He's going into a second inning. He doesn't do it that often, but again, like I said, not a lot of options out there for you. A low changeup misses 1-0. You know, when you're trailing like you're trailing and you're trying to just get yourself in position to come back in a game, you can't think about what's going to happen later. You expect your team to eventually either overcome or fall apart. Now we're getting into dangerous territory here in the 11th as he's 2-0 against Brandon Lowe. He's 0-3 on the game. The left-handed batter stands in. If he puts him on, you almost have to go to Fulmer. The pitch. Misses outside and a cut fastball, 3-0. With Choi on deck. Sox don't want to give up another run here. The hope is that Colome could do something here in the 11th inning to delay, bringing in really the last option at pitcher. But he walks him on four straight pitches. He's frustrated. He punches the air. And they're going to go out and get him. Carson Fulmer is in for his eighth appearance. He's 1-1, one and, one and he has a save on the season. 11 and a third innings pitch, 2.38 earned run average. Right, he's hitting 143 against him. He comes in with two on against Choi, and he fouls one off immediately. 0 and 1 the count. The next pitch is lifted out in the right field. Angle going back towards the wall. He will catch this in front of the track. Get the ball in quickly. There's going to be a play at third as they try to advance Kiermaier, and he gets there. So he hit it deep enough to advance the runner. The go-ahead run stands at third base now with one out in the top of the 11th. And Adamas comes in. And his plan is to just try to hit one hard. And if he gets it up in the air, a lot of speed at third base is going to score. The pitch. Two-seamer hits the corner 0-1. And, and I said it wrong, it's Meadows. Meadows is on third base. All these Rays guys look the same. It's like they make them in a factory. First and third, tie game, top of the 11th. One out. Swung on and missed, 0-2. Fulmer has him right now. Carson Fulmer pitching with more confidence this year than I've ever seen him pitch. Stands in waiting for the sign from McCann. Pretty much everybody's played tonight for the White Sox. It's a team effort to climb back into this game and tie it at five. Swung on and missed. Three pitches. Strikes out Adamas. Fulmer gets the two outs here. Still trying to hold it. And Yandy Diaz will come to the plate. Runner still at first and third. I would expect the gratuitous steal of second base. But I haven't seen it yet. As this one's grounded to second base. Caught by Mandrigal over to first. Nice nifty play by Nick Mandrigal, and the inning is over. Carson Fulmer bails out Colome. We are the bottom of the 11th, trying to get one to win. Colin Posh comes in for his 14th appearance. The relievers 0-1 in save opportunities, 1-0 in record. He's got a 3.43 earned run average. Danny Mendick, who came in as a pinch runner in the ninth and scored. To tie the game, he was the tying run. Now comes up to bat in the bottom of the 11th inning in the two spot where Yasmani Grandal once was. With James McCann in the hole in the three spot where Jose Abreu once was. And he's one and one in the count. The pitch on the way. Inside curveball misses two and one. It'll be Mendick, McCann, Mancada. With Jimenez right behind him. If there was ever an inning, this feels like it. Sox need to find a way to get a run across here. Two and two on that swing and a miss. Now Mendick strikes out looking on an inside fastball at the knees. He says something to the umpire. Don't get yourself thrown out. We don't have any players. Go back and sit down and think about it. It was a strike. It was obviously a strike. And here's James McCann. He's hitting 300 as the backup catcher. 
and puts this one immediately out into the gap, tailing back towards the wall and is off the wall and over the wall. McCann gets a ground rule double on his first swing of the game here in the bottom of the 11th inning. And he is the winning run standing on second base with one out. And Yoan Moncada hitting from the right side for the first time against a left-handed pitcher. Takes an outside curveball, 1-0. Jimenez in the hole, waiting on deck. One out, bottom of the 11th. James McCann gets the one-out double. Moncada now up, 1-0 in the count. The pitch, outside curveball, misses. 2-0 the count. He's hitting 333 with runners in scoring position. He drove in. Two runs to tie this game in the ninth. Yoan tied it. Can he win it now for the White Sox? Two innings later. Is it Moncada night on the south side? Inside four seamer misses 3 0. They don't want anything to do with him. But what are you going to do when Aloy Jimenez comes looking for you? He's got that average up now to 279 sitting on 10 home runs in the top five in the MLB. And a low four-seamer. They walk him on four pitches. Posh wants nothing to do with Yoan Moncada, who goes down to first base. So Moncada's at first. McCann's at second. There's one out here in the bottom of the 11th. Aloy Jimenez comes up three for five with a double, two singles, and an RBI. He's hitting 279, slugging 533 with 10 home runs. And all he needs is a base hit here into the right spot, and maybe McCann can score. Swings and misses at a four-seamer down the middle, and he wanted every bit of that pitch. He just reared back and tried to kill it. There's no shift on for him with the runners. So he gets a normal setup, and he doesn't see that that often. The 0-1 pitch. Check swing. It goes for a strike on the outside corner. So quickly, 0-2. Two. two fastballs. As Posh goes right for him, the lefty was afraid of Moncada, but is challenging Jimenez. Next pitch swung on and missed. He got a split finger by him. Three pitches and he's out. Jimenez has a bad at bat. So easily, it is obvious that the lefty for the Rays was pitching around Moncada to get to Jimenez. But now he gets Edwin Encarnacion with two outs in the bottom of the 11th. And an inside curveball catches the plate, 0-1. The Sox have had base runners all over the bases tonight. And at times have had trouble getting the run in, although they did it in the ninth. But the guy that did it was walked on four straight in an unintentional, intentional walk. And now Encarnacion, who was intentionally walked in the ninth, is up there, 1-1. One and one. Swung on and missed a four-seamer at the knees. One and two the count as he reaches for one that might have been out of the zone. A pitcher's count. Here we go. Down the third baseline, just foul. Oh, half a foot to the right and this game is over. High pitch misses. Two and two now. Fans are up. They're looking for something. The pitch. Misses inside and a curveball. Three and two. Adam Engel, who made the last out of the ninth with the bases loaded, stands on deck. He might get another opportunity with the same thing. If Encarnacion walks, he will. The next pitch. Outside misses on a four-seamer, and he does walk. So for the second time tonight, with two outs and a chance to be the hero, Adam Engel comes to the plate. He's 0 for 2. He came in halfway through the game. He does much better against lefties, and he's got a lefty up there finally in Posh. Bases loaded, two outs, bottom of the 11th inning. A hit wins it. Swung on and ripped down the third baseline. It will hook foul about two sections away from the pole. Angle all over the first pitch, way out in front of it. Next one misses inside on a curveball, one and one. 22 pitches so far for the Rays relief pitcher, trying to get his team to the 12th inning. The Sox want to end it right here. Can they do it? The pitch. Misses low on a four-seamer, two and one. 
At some point, he'll have to lay it in there to Angle, who's being very patient. He has struck out twice in this game, in both at-bats. It only takes one. The pitch. Foul back. Split finger down the middle. It was in the zone. You got to hack at it. Two and two now. The count is even. Who will win this battle? Swung on and missed a four-seamer right down the middle. Angle can't catch up to it. For the third time tonight, the White Sox have the bases loaded and can't get that run in. After 11, still tied at five. Mike Zunino comes in. The catcher. Carson Fulmer on the mound. Zunino's one for four. The 12th inning starts with a fastball taken for a strike. Those that have stuck around feel like it's owed to them at this point. This team trailing by two in the ninth inning. Tie the game up. Get the bases loaded. And Adam Engel strikes out. Two innings later, the bases are loaded yet again. And Engel strikes out. Trust me, Ricky Renteria is kicking himself for taking Mazzara out of the game. But Engel's been so hot. And he's had opportunities against left-handed pitchers, which he's been eating up all year and can't do it. As Fulmer gets the first batter swinging on a 2-2 pitch. And sits him down. Carson Fulmer continues to amaze coming out of the pen. And the confidence continues to grow for this young man. The White Sox draft pick out of options basically made the team because of that. And he's on the mound trying to hold it down. Give them another shot. Kiermaier comes in the nine hitter. Takes a four seamer high and inside for a strike. He's got a double, a single, an RBI. He's two for four. Made it all the way to third base at one point late in this game. As they were trying to scratch another run. Now he tries to bunt this one down the third base line. It is off the bag, so it's fair. Mendick thought it was going to go foul. Waited to see if it would curve. I don't think he had a play by the time it got the third. He's playing back. Kiermaier takes advantage of where the defense is set up. Ball goes right down and stops at the third base bag which means it's definitely in fair territory. So he's on with a bunt. So with one out, there's a fast runner on first base who can steal. And he's going right away. Throw down by McCann. He's safe underneath it. So on the first pitch, they steal second. So a bunt turns into a double. And there's one out here on the top of the 12th and a runner on second base that might try for third. The pitch from Fulmer. Low and inside, ball two, two and oh the count. Joey Wendell kicked off the game with a double. Since then, nothing. He's one for five. Four seamer at the knees goes for a strike, taken. Two and one the count now. Sacks have had nothing but opportunities in this game tonight to win it. And just haven't been able to get that hit. The Rays probably feel the same way as this one sent down the first baseline hooking foul. Count is even at two. The lefty Wendell awaits the righty's pitch. Inside curveball taken for a ball. Count is full at three and two with Jose Martinez on deck and after him. Then you get to Austin Meadows. And you don't want to get to him. Here's the pitch. Misses outside on a fastball. So first and second now with one out. And Martinez comes to the plate here in the top of the 12th inning. He's one for five. He got that hit in the first inning as well. With a single and a run scored on Austin Meadows' three-run home run. And a ball misses just below the knees for Seamer. 1-0 quickly. Fulmer trying to hold it down the pitch. This one sent on the right field. It's going to be a base hit. There's going to be a play at the plate on Kiermaier. He's actually going to stop halfway down the line and go back to third. The bases are loaded for Austin Meadows here. In the top of the 12th inning, they're going to go out and talk to their pitcher. Don Cooper has the entire infield out there with him. He wants to make sure they're going over what they're doing. 
And now they're set up. Austin Meadows comes to the plate two for five with a three-run home run. Bases loaded, one out. First pitch is a strike to Seamer. It's the upper outside portion of the strike zone. Meadows has got a home run, a single, three RBI. You got one out here in the 12th. He knows if he hits it deep enough, he's going to get that run. Next pitch is low, a curveball, one and one. Nothing going in the White Sox bullpen. It's obvious they don't have an arm yet. They can bring up. This is Fulmer's inning. Outside four, Seamer misses two and one. It comes a point in time when you got to rely on your long guy, and that's Fulmer. You're in the 12th inning. You had a chance to win this in the 9th and a chance to win this in the 11th. The 2-1 pitch. Strike. Inside corner. Change up. 2-2. Two two. Game tied at 5. One out in the top of the 12th. Bases are loaded. There's speed at third base. Pretty good speed at second, too. The pitch. Foul back. Two seamer tried to get it by him. Just went off the end of his bat. Count remains even at two. Fulmer puts the next one by him, a four-seamer right down the middle, and sits Meadows down. And the frustrated Austin Meadows throws his bat as Carson Fulmer refuses to die out there. And now he's got two outs of the bases loaded here in the top of the 12th inning. And Brandon Lowe comes to the plate. He's 0 for 3. But he's walked the last two times he's been up, and he takes it inside to Seamer for a strike. 0 and 1. Sacks packed with Rays. Tie game top of the 12th. The pitch. Down the first baseline. Nice snag by Yoan Mancata. When you got a third baseman at first, he can make third baseman plays over there. Really nice snag. The Sacks are out of the inning, unassisted three. You go to the bottom of the 12th. Tie to five. Chaz Rowe comes in for the Rays. They keep going to the bullpen themselves. Seven innings. This is his 11th appearance. 5.14 earned run average. He's got more walks than strikeouts. And opponents are hitting over 300 against him from both sides of the plate. Nick Mandrigal's 0 for 5. Oh, it's going to suck for this kid if he goes 0 for 6, isn't it? Here's the pitch. Slider misses outside, 1-0 the count. It is late at night on the south side of Chicago. In the bottom of the 12th, and the pitch misses low, 2-0. Mandrigal's got speed. It'd be nice to get him on. He was 3-0 the last time he was up in the 11th inning. And he could not get on base. The 2-0 pitch. Misses outside, 3-0. Robert stands on deck. Rowe with the pitch. Just gets the outside corner on a two-seamer. And Mander goes now 3-1. and one. This is what happened the last time up. 3-0, and oh, then they painted the corner twice on him and ended up getting him. Down the middle, he fouls it back. But he's full. Nick Mandrigal has had a rough night. It seemed like he was turning the corner over the last couple of days. But an 0 for 5 night, the pitch. And he's 0 for 6 with a strikeout. Slider down the middle. And the kid just looks bewildered. Mandrigal overmatched. Luis Robert comes to the plate now. He's 1 for 4, but a big, big double. In the ninth inning, set up the White Sox. Tying that game. He was one of the two runs that eventually score on a Yoan Mancata single that bring the Sox from being down 5-3 to three to 5-5. Five to five. He's 1-0 in this count from the righty row. Fastball gets across at the knees. 1-1. One one. Feels like we're waiting for the Sox to either at a home run or Carson Fulmer to just run out of gases. Robert puts this one down the third base line. Foul, one and two. Because they just can't, with the exception of Moncada's hit, just can't seem to get the big hit in the big moment. Struck him out on three pitches, a slider down the middle. Robert swings through it. Tim Anderson comes to the plate. It's been a long, long night. He's one for six, up for his seventh time. 
first pitch rifled out of the right field for a base hit. So T.A.'s on with two outs. There's speed aboard. And Danny Mendick comes to the plate. He's in that spot because he was the second run that came across the plate, the tying run, when speed was needed. And sure, boy, was it needed. If you didn't bring in the pinch runners, I don't think they would have won or tied that game, I'm saying. They wouldn't have tied it in the ninth inning. If you don't bring in the pinch runners like you did. Two outs. Anderson on first. He's going. Pitches a strike. Throw down to second base. Anderson's safe, so he's in scoring position. 1-1 one, one count. The 12th stolen base for T.A. this season. And now a base hit's going to win this game as Mendick stands in with two outs. Swung on and lifted down the third baseline. Just foul. Just missed the chalk. That would have ended it. Instead, we're one and two. They're so close in this game. It's been frustrating. Swung on and missed on a slider, and the sacks go down. We've gone through 12 innings and don't have a result yet. Where do I hit the button that just tells me what happened? Let's go to the 13th here in Chicago. Our longest game of the season takes us to the top of the 13th inning. And G-Man Choi up at the plate. He's 0 for 5. And the first pitch is a base hit in the right field. So the leadoff man is on as Carson Fulmer remains in the game. He had 28 pitches so far coming in. He's the man, Choi. And believe me, this is crazy. Choi had a seven game hit streak. And that hit is his first of the game. So because we make it to the 13th inning, he now has an eight game hit streak. That's crazy. Willie Adamas comes in, shows bunt, pulls back. 1-0 the count. So he's trying to move the runner over. Squares again. Inside pitch, he pulls back. Fulmer threw in on the hands. But it's 2-0 now. With no outs in the top of the 13th and a runner on first. Now he goes to swing, but he checks up on an inside pitch. 3-0. Carson Fulmer's done... A very good job out there. But at some point, you need your offense to score for you. They have not. Throws a get-me-over fastball, 3-1. and one. He's been a warrior out there for the Sox. He takes over for Colome with two on and no out in the 11th inning and gets out of it. Does really well through the 12th, and now he's got a full count here. And the pitch on the way. And he got him. Outside corner fastball. Nice call by McCann froze him. Adamas thought that was ball four, but he got him. Clearly inside the strike zone, lower outside portion. And there's one out now on the top of the 13th with Choi on first base. Not a threat to go. He's a station to station runner, but a base hit out in the right field immediately will move him over to second. So two softly hit balls set out in the right field with a strike out in the middle. Have us one out here in the top of the 13th, and Mike Zunino, one for five up at the plate. He fouls his four-seamer off down the third base line. The Sox will see James McCann, Yoan Mancata, Aloy Jimenez coming up in the bottom of the 13th. And I don't think, I think if it doesn't happen in that inning, it's not going to happen tonight, folks. Count goes to two and one to the Zunino. Fulmer now gets him swinging on a curveball inside 2-2. Two two. Choi's on second base. He's the go-ahead run. He's a station-to-station -station runner, basically. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Swung on and missed, and Fulmer sits him down. He's got two strikeouts in this inning. That's his fifth strikeout in relief through two and two-thirds. Carson Fulmer continues to make his case to remain on this team. It would be hard to not let him stay on this team. Kiermaier comes in and fouls one off. The nine hitter has been pesky here for the White Sox. He's three for five. He's got a double and two singles and an RBI. The left-handed hitter has got good speed and has been timely up there at the plate. Fulmer gets in the swing over a curveball 0-2 quickly. Can he get through the top of the 13th? Looks for the sign from McCann in the pitch. Fouled off down the third baseline. 
Now it's chapped over to second base. Mandrigal goes for the force to Anderson. It was a strange decision because I thought first base was easier for him. It worked out. Both teams have five runs on 13 hits as we go to the bottom of the 13th. A beautiful evening turned into night. Night turned into really, really, really night. Man, it's late. It's five to five in the bottom of the 13th and James McCann comes up. He's seen one pitch and he hit it off the top of the wall, but the Sox could not score him in the 11th. And now an outside cut fastball misses 1-0. He came in as a replacement after Leary Garcia and Danny Mendick came in as pinch runners in the ninth. The gamble paid off in large part as the Sox were able to score two and get Garcia to third. But they could not get Garcia across. Rondal's out of the game. McCann's in. He's 3-0 quickly. He's also hitting in the three spot. Because Abreu and Grandal were replaced in that inning by Mendick and then Garcia. Mendick stayed in. Garcia replaced in the three spot by the new catcher McCann, the 3-0 pitch. Misses Lowe, he walks on four pitches. So James McCann has done his job off the bench. As Rowe remains in the game, as the Rays are running out of guys too. The Rays have two relief pitchers left in their pen. And then their starters available, I guess. They wanted to do that. Makata comes to the plate. First pitch low and inside, 1-0. and The White Sox have two relievers in their pen that are seemingly unavailable, and they're starters. Outside slider, 2-0. and If you're bringing in anybody, it would be Giolito. You could bring in him. Let him pitch. He wouldn't get the start tomorrow. Next pitch is a strike, and now a swinging strike by Moncada. Count is even, two and two. Fulmer, though, has been pitching well, and I believe he probably has at least one more inning. This one's sent down the third baseline foul. Moncada's two for five, including the big two RBI single that tied this game, but he pops this one up the third. And now there's one out in the bottom of the 13th, and Aloy Jimenez comes up three for six. He's got a double, two singles, and an RBI. He almost hit a home run to win this thing. He was caught at the wall. He was the last out. Actually, he was not the last out. He was the second out of the ninth inning. He swings and misses at this one, 0-1. It's hard to remember. It's been a long game. Swung on and missed on a two-seam fastball, 0-2. Jimenez went down on three pitches, swinging. Last time up. He swung and missed at the first two here from Rowe. With one out, the pitch. Inside taken for Seamer, one and two. McCann down at first base. He isn't going anywhere. He's waiting for a hit to advance him. Sox have nobody left on the bench that can really run. As Jimenez fouls this one off, one and two. The next offering. Swung on and missed a cut fastball. Jimenez goes down swinging. He struck out a few times tonight. Once again, the Sox get a run on and... And everything stops. Edwin Encarnacion's only one for three because he's got a bunch of walks in this game. Chaz Rose out there. And he gave up a, a walk right away and got the next two guys. Throws an outside pitch for a ball, 1-0. and oh. The pitch on the way. Chop back foul, 1-1 one and one the count. The game that never seems to want to end continues here. The pitch to Encarnacion. Swung on and fouled back. One and two the count. Next one swung on and missed. And Edwin goes down. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but we go to the top of the 14th inning. Still tied at five. If you're listening to a simulated baseball game that's gone into the 14th inning, God bless you. As the top of the order comes up, for the Rays, Joey Wendell's one for five, and Carson Fulmer sitting on 45 pitches. Throws a ball high and outside. It is now 11-17 at night, according. They put a clock up on the game. That's hysterical to point out how late it is in this 14-inning game. I'm sorry. That says it's a four-hour game. Four hours and seven minutes so far in real time this game would be. As a ball is lifted out to the left center field gap, and Wendell's going to get two. 
He leads off with a double like he did at the beginning of this game four hours and seven minutes ago. His eighth double of the season. And Jose Martinez comes up. And Don Cooper's going to come out and talk with Carson Fulmer a little bit. Just see how he's doing. Don't want to hurt the youngster. He's been out there for a while. Doing the best that he can. His offense hasn't been able to get him a run. Jimmy Cordero's up. And Lucas Giolito is at least warming in the pen. That doesn't mean he's coming in. Ground ball to first. Mancata sucks it up. He'll take the ball over to first base. It'll advance the runner 90 feet to third. So Meadows will come up with one out and a runner on third base as Fulmer continues to try to work here in the 14th inning. Came in in the 11th with two on, got out of the inning. Pitched a perfect 12th. Has five strikeouts so far. Got through a jam in the 13th. He's got a runner on third here with one out. And Austin Meadows up, who's already seen him before. He's doing yeoman's work out there. Just waiting for this team to get a run. The 0-1 pitch on the way. Sent foul down the first base line. 0-2. He has struck out Meadows already once in this game. The pitch on the way. Sent out into left center field. That goes back towards the wall. It is off the wall. A run will score. Meadows coming around second base. is going to try for three. Anderson with the throw in on the relay. Just underneath the tag is Meadows. He hits a triple. And the Rays have taken a 6-5 to five lead in this game. It took a while, but finally a team broke, and it's the White Sox. And you can't say they didn't have enough chances at the plate tonight. It's not over in any way. But now Brandon Lowe comes up. And Fulmer deals a four-seamer strike to him. 0-1 the count. If Carson Fulmer takes a loss in this game, it almost feels unfair. He has bailed the White Sox out for the last few innings. He has gotten out of some really interesting jams. And he is pitched with guts as this one misses. One and one the count. His team let him down. Before he came out, they were unable to get a run across with one out and runners at first and second. Round ball the second. Madrigal will check and make sure Meadows isn't advancing and throw it over to first. Two out. After Mancata tied it up with a bases loaded single that scored two. Jimenez hit one to the wall that was caught as Kiermaier crashed into the wall. Leary Garcia advanced to third. Eventually, Mancada gets the second on a wild pitch, and after that happens, they walk intentionally Edwin Encarnacion, and Angle strikes out. In the 11th, the bases are loaded again before Engel strikes out. It's not just on Adam Engel. Other guys aren't getting it done either. Last inning, Sox had a chance again and didn't get anything done. Ground ball up the middle, and that's going to get through, and now the Rays have two runs. So a disappointing finish here of this game, it feels like, is on its way. Adamas comes in with two outs in the top of the 14th, takes an inside fastball, 1-0 the count. If you didn't have C-Shack and Cordero available, really, I don't think the only I think the only person that would come in now would be Cordero, who's warming up in the pen. Because he obviously said, I'll get out there if I need to. But you'd you'd rather at this point see if Fulmer can get this batter. If he can't, I think you'll see Cordero come in. You won't see Giolito now. Not when you're trailing by two. This will just be warm-ups for him that he'll throw and he'll still pitch tomorrow. And now this one is lifted deep down the third baseline. It will hook foul. Close to the pole. Two and one the count to Adamas. And now he sends this one on a line drive to Nick Mandrigal. And he makes a leaping play to catch that one. 
saving extra base hits. We end the 14th, or the top of the 14th, trailing by two and trying to come back yet again. Adam Engel comes up to lead it off for the White Sox. It'll be Engel, Madrigal, and Robert, the bottom of the order, chasing two, and the bottom of the 14th. And Rowe remains out there for the Rays. So obviously the two guys they have in the bullpen may not be available as well. He's been doing it now for the last couple of innings for them. Throws an inside slider, 0-2, quickly to Angle. Adam Angle was not even the starter today. And he's 0-3 at the plate. It made sense on paper to bring him in. But he has, as I said, struck out twice with the bases loaded here in the ninth and the 11th innings. He's now 2-2. Two and two. He was the player of the game on Sunday. A big part of that comeback against the Orioles. But baseball changes on you quickly. And tonight has not been his night so far. Lifts this one out deep in the right field. I can't believe this. Oh, it's caught at the wall. For a second, I thought it was going to clear. <laughs> He ripped it. It looked like the outfielder was giving up on it. Meadows, it looked like he was giving up on it. And then all of a sudden, he took two quick steps, turned around, and caught it on the warning track. I thought he was looking up for it like it was going over. Mandrigal comes up now with one out. And sends one into the left center field gap that's going to get down for a hit. Good for him. I didn't want him going 0 for 8. Nick Mandrigal comes up with a double. So the kid finally gets a hit. He won't go down. So we're going to at least get the tying run to the plate here with one out in the bottom of the 14th inning. Do the Sox have anything left? Do they just want to make it more dramatic? Roberts one for five. He had a double and scored in that ninth inning. A cut fastball misses inside. 1-0. and oh. With one out in the bottom of the 14th. Mandrigal's on second. Robert. The tying run at the plate. Sitting on two home runs. The pitch on the way. Swung on and sent out in the center field. It might drop in there. No, a nice play by Kiermaier. Coming in quickly. Mandrigal waits at second base. And that's the wise thing to do. There was a chance it could have fallen in, but you're not going to get doubled off. you got to know the situation. So T.A. comes up now with two outs in the bottom of the 14th, and he's the White Sox' last hope. As Rowe looks in for pitch number 43 in relief. Throws an inside slider for a strike at the knees. T.A.'s two for seven tonight. Everybody's batting average is taking a hit. Virtually everybody's. I think I look here, Roberts three for seven. This isn't a bad night. It would have been nice though in a couple of those at-bats if he would have been able to connect later on in the game. He would have won this one. Anderson lifts this one on the right field, and when it comes down, unfortunately, this ball game is over. So the White Sox extend this game five extra innings with heroics in the ninth, but are unable to come away with the victory. It's a late night. There's nothing else to say. As the game is long enough right now in your player, I'm just going to end it. We'll come back tomorrow. Lucas Giolito will be our starter. Carson Fulmer takes the loss. Four innings pitched. He gave up seven hits. Struck out five. Walked one. and gave up two earned runs in his fourth inning. He was out there, but I thought he pitched a pretty good game. He just ran out of gas, and the Sox didn't have a lot of options. Yohan Moncada with the heroics to tie this thing up in the ninth inning. Grandal was two for four with that two-run home run in the first, but... Austin Meadows going three for seven with a home run and a big triple that scored the go-ahead run. And after 14 innings, the White Sox drop this one seven to five. We'll be back tomorrow. Shake this one off. The Sox are still seven games over 500. We'll see you tomorrow for another White Sox simulated ball game from Sox in the Basement. Found everywhere podcasts can be found and always at SoxInTheBasement.com. Bye-bye, everybody. Sox in the Basement. Socks in the basement. Socks in the basement. Socks in the basement. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found and always on socksinthebasement.com.